Hey everyone, Eric here. And today we're gonna to go beyond SketchUp Desktop in order to use an extension to speed up the process for making both berms and bioswales. So what's the big deal about berms and swales? Um, do we need an extension for that? I would say no, we're actually gonna look at how to do it with sandbox tools. But the challenge is, is if you're doing sandbox, it means that you're only, you're gonna get a better result if you have better input information. What I mean by input is things like contours. Like you wanna know exactly where the slope in the terrain is going to tell sandbox how to make the slope or, or the grading. So in this case, we're gonna use an extension called Soap Skin Bubble. You've probably heard about it before. Um, we're gonna go ahead and use it to do both of these right now. So let's just get to it. Okay, so here we are. Like I said, this is kind of the berm that I'm looking to create, something that's nice and smooth. If I turn my hidden geometry on, you can see that there's no bumps, there's no little hiccups or anything. And then a swale is essentially an inverted berm. You can see that what we're gonna do in this case, the drainage from the street would go down into like this little planting pocket and would get filtered before going into the sewage or the sewer system. And so you can see, again, same thing. That's what we wanna do. So how might we approach this normally? Well, let's start with native tools and then I wanna compare the extension method because I really wanna see the difference both in the amount of time and in the quality of the result. So here we've got, if we're going to do native tools, like I said, you know, we need something to start with. We need to tell the sandbox what to do. We can sculpt it if we wanted to try using the um, smooth tool, we could try to sculpt the berm, but I'm wanting something that's an even gradient from here to here. I wanna make sure that I'm this tall. In this case, it's gonna be, I'm gonna need contours in order to be able to tell um, in this case here, and I've got my um, sandbox, in order to be able to tell sandbox from contours what to make the slope. So let's go ahead and try that. So you can't see it because it's white, but I'm gonna go ahead and grab my paint bucket and paint that, and there you go. Now, from a distance, um, if I were to say, let's see, let's if I just kind of hid uh, my edges here, and I just kept the slope, let me hide those contours. You know, from a distance, it looks okay. You might not be able to tell, you know, from the result or compared to where we're starting here, my kind of what I want to create. But if you look close, if I turn hidden geometry on and you look close, firstly, I need to know my high point. Second thing I need is I need my ridge line and I need each of my one foot contours. So that's a lot of information that I need to start with. And even then you can see the way that the the way that the sandbox from contours triangulates the tin or the terrain, it's not perfect. It's kind of jagged a little bit when I would like that smoother. So that's kind of the first example of, let's see if we can get a better result. And then again, remember I didn't draw those contours. I already had them drawn in um, before, but obviously it takes a few minutes to make sure that you know what height you are and where you want to place everything, where you want the slope to stop and start. So in this case, let's pretend like I don't have any of that. All I know is I have the shape of this berm for this plaza that I'm designing. And what I want to do is just make this a simple berm. So I'm going to select this. I want to make sure I select all the geometry and then let's come up to view tool palettes, and under extensions, there's one called Soap Bubble. That's a funny name. It's actually a free one. So I'm gonna pop over to the extensions warehouse just to kind of show you what that looks like. If you type in soap, you'll find it or skin or bubble. So Soap Skin Bubble is works really great for organic forms. And it also works for tensile structures. So you've probably seen this vi other videos posted about how to do sort of these really complex organic forms. But what we wanna do is sort of say, what happens if we're just working above and below the ground? So once that's installed, it's super simple to use if you've never used it. Make sure that you've selected your whole bounding area, the whole, you, know, you maybe be careful, double check to make sure you don't have extra lines like I do. So triple click, make sure that whole thing is selected. It's just loose geometry, not a group or a component. And then this first, let me pull this over. This first icon, it's called skin. It generates a skin, so something that we can use to then inflate or deflate, depending on how we wanna do it. So the skin right now, if you look at the bottom corner, it says the divisions are 10. Now 10 means each one of these squares, that's just basically how the density or the level of detail that you're gonna get in your grades. In this case, I wanna, if I want a really smooth one, I might pop up to something like 30 uh, for the number of divisions. 
might even want to go a little bit higher, 40. Probably don't want to go super high because you're just adding more detail to your model that you may or may not see. If you're happy, just hit enter or return. And then you can see what it did. It's not only did it skin it, but it put it into this group, this handy group for you. This is where you want to kind of pause for a second. Because before we bubble it or inflate it, we need to understand which direction we're going. If the contours, if your skin like mine for some reason, I don't know, maybe it's just the way that I drew my geometry. Sometimes you get it where the faces, the reversed faces are pointing up instead of down. If that's the case, you can come in here and you can reverse them, um, in which case you are going to be pointing the right direction, or you can just invert whether you're going up or down. And I'll give you an example here. So let's go back and pretend like I didn't um, reverse those faces. When I go to bubble this, it's going to ask me, look in the bottom corner, it's going to say, what's your pressure do you want? Well, I want to push this up, let's say something like 40 PSI, although of course there's no it's not real. You can see what happens is I just typed in 40. It's actually going down 40. Now, could I scale this whole thing, you know, and by a, a negative one? Yes, I could. Or I could come in here and say bubble it. But in this time, I'm going to type in negative 40. And it's going to push up instead of down, which is exactly what I wanted as far as my berm. Of course, if you wanted to go, I'm going to go back to the way that good, you know, just good habits. Reverse those faces, make sure you have your front faces up. And then when I type in bubble, I can just go ahead and type in 40 or let's try 50 this time. Let's try a different number. And you can see what I'm doing. As you can see in real time, how that berm pops up. Grab my grass texture and to get rid of the um, quad mesh or these squine up square lines, that's easy. Just open up your soften smooth edges and click soften coplanar. So turn that on or off depending on your settings. And there you go. Go. Now I'm going to finish this up here, my little berm here. You can see how qu it was so quick to make the berm. Now I actually have extra time. I'm going to do the contours afterwards. So for me, instead of having those contours first and then making the berm with them, I'm going to do the opposite. Make the berm, then do the contours. So I'm going to come extensions. There's another extensions. I'm going to put the link to both of these in the description. It's called Contour Maker by TIG. So I click on contours, it's going to ask me what interval or spacing I want one foot. That's kind of typical for here in the United States. Click OK. And then what you can see is here are my contours. It kind of puts it on a new tag for me, which I like. So I'm going to put this on my contour tag and then that way it shows up as dashed. I like that dashed line. Helps me kind of make it reads more as a something that's not really there in my model. If that's difficult for you to see, um, it's because probably because of that texture. It's a little hard to see those lines um, on top of the texture, but they're there. So there we go. My berm is all set. I'm just going to grab some trees and a person, and I'm just going to call this first one done. Looks great. So I'm ready to move on and finish the rest of my plaza design. So now let's take a look at that same method, but this time for instead of going up, we're going to go down. So I mean, you kind of already saw how I explained. You can just kind of reverse the, you can go up or down with the pressure. So you can tell it to whether you want to make a berm. Obviously, you're going positive. You want to go up. Uh, again, also depends on which direction your faces are facing. So if we did this with Sandbox, let's go ahead and take a look at this result. I've got this um, sort of a basin here. I've got, maybe I want to pull this one up a little bit so that the great, so it's not so um, steep transition. So it's a little bit more equal, but basically grab my top edge, hold shift, grab everything, grab my sort of lower, uh, my slope, my mid slope, my midline, and then my bottom um, where the water would side up, sort of pool. Come over here to sandbox from contours, grab my grass texture, and there it is. Now it's not, again, not bad. There's nothing wrong with using the native tools. I'm just comparing a different method. Same thing, I needed to know my contours, I needed to know where I wanted things to hit. If I turn on my hidden geometry, you can see that it's not perfect, you know, like it's kind of has a little bit of a step here. It doesn't exactly go um, super smooth, but it's pretty good. And I would say that that's good enough um, for most of the uses that I would have. So let's go ahead and finish up by saying, well, again, same thing. I don't know where, I'm just, this is just a schematic design. I just kind of want something that looks like a swale. I don't need it graded to perfection. So what I'm gonna do is grab, I'm just gonna sort of triple click 
make sure that I have um, the bounding, the top bounding box. We're going to come over here to soap skin one more time, skin it. It's going to ask me for the divisions. Let's type in 40 again, same number. Obviously, we can type in 100 if we wanted this super detailed. I mean, 40, 50. It all depends on what you need, what works for you. And then what I'm going to do is now this one, because the, the faces are reversed in this case, so when I say bubble, I don't have to put a negative number in. I put a positive number in, so I put something like 40 again. And what it's going to do is it's going to push down 40. And then there it is. So I'm going to smooth that same process. I'm going to go ahead and smooth that out. Just out of good habits, I'm going to come over here to reverse faces. And lastly, sample and place that. So let's go ahead and grab that contour, which is if I select this sort of new bioswale mesh that I have here, I'm going to turn my hidden geometry on again. You can see it's a quad mesh, not a triangulated mesh. So that's nice and smooth. And then go extensions, contour, maker. Let's try one foot, although I don't know if we wanted to just show more contours, we could go smaller interval. And yeah, because I'm not even a, really a foot deep here. So I would have to go probably a little deeper, maybe something like come down 1.5 or two even. And then let's try that contour. Let's make this a little bit deeper swale. And then I'm going to call it. So let's do that. And you can see there's my one foot contour and put that onto my contour tag so that it's dashed. And I don't need my materials. So that's it, everyone. Thanks for watching this tutorial. I know this extension here, Soap Skin Bubble, it's been around for a long time, but I just feel like, uh, like a lot of things we do in SketchUp, it's not just necessarily, here's how this extension works. It's how I use this extension in my workflow to help me make a better model or to help me with my efficiency. So the combination of those things, the quality of the model and being able to execute sort of simple tasks a little bit more effectively and efficiently, that's always, always, always my goal. So I don't, it never hurts to repeat uh, these lessons and I will leave you there. I will say thank you all for watching. Uh, if you haven't given us uh, that thumbs up on this video, if you learned something new, give it. Um, if you didn't, that's okay. And then uh, be sure to subscribe while you're at it so you get all the latest news and all the latest videos that come through this channel. So thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.